Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor and welcome to a brand new tutorial today. And this is something that I've been wanting to feature for ages, and it's Mob Sakai's UI effects. Whether you want to change the color, the gradients, the backgrounds, animations, whether you want to do soft masks, unmasking, having particles part of your UI, there's just oh, there's just so so many. And I did do a tutorial on this to how to actually mask off UI elements, and I used Mob Sakai's effect to do a very really subtle soft mask which is better than Unis's default inbuilt masking system but we're going to look at bunches of these today i'll put all the links down in the description for all the stuff i've used and the previous tutorial to look at all of that do be sure to check out all the links in the description for best sales savings and and everything across game dev for this month be sure to check out my patreon to get access to over 165 different scripts assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else First of all, you can check out Mob Sakai's GitHub page for lots of different stuff, whether it's the UI effects or otherwise, you can click into any of them. But we're going to look at the UI effects first. It has the description with all the details about it. It's got documentation, it's installation instructions, demos, and everything that you need to know to get this started and how to actually use everything, program it, and so much more. But to get these in your project, use any version of Unity. I'm using the most recent, which is 2020.1.12. You can click on the drop down of the code and just copy that direct link for the GitHub. When you go into Unity, you can go to the package manager, click on the drop downs, click to add via Git URL, and just paste and click add. Then you will be given the version four, most likely, unless you're in a previous version of Unity. I think it's below 2018. You'll need to import it slightly differently, but it's unlikely that you would be. Make sure the update or make sure it's imported and you can import the demo to get a good look at the usage. So then once you've got the actual samples demo, you can open up the UI effects version four, look at the demo and then open up the UI effect underscore demo scene because it'll have a little unity icon. Now here's an example of one of the effects, which is grayscale on this image. Now, if you want to add it, this just uses the UI effect but you can go to component, you can go to UI, and you can go to the UI effects. And you can just go to UI effect for the different modes, whether it's grayscale, sepia, the negative pixel, or the hue, and you can change any of those to what you might want them to do. You can have multiply, fill, add, or subtract, and you can do different values for each thing for how much you want that quantity to be. And you can choose a blur if you want to actually do blurs on any of the particular UI elements you want. And it's a really cool effect to just use UI effect if you need to blur a specific background. As you can see, you can do the different blurs, add or multiply the colors. You can do a shadow, a gradient, a flip, a shiny, a dissolve, or a transition. And they do take different elements. Then this has a specific UI dissolve factor that you can dissolve across choosing a width what sort of color that you want to dissolve the things and to be able to do shadows and so much more. So you can see in the quick demo here that we've got different animated examples and it can use the animated too. So you can do animated or use this programmatically. So you can flip shadows and you can do loads of different awesome effects. You have the different shiny buttons that you can use and these have can be used on sliders or otherwise or you can do it on an animation. As we said, you can use dissolves and animate dissolves just like that. You can use animations to transition a scene, which looks like a fade or a dissolve. And then at the bottom, we just have different looks of grayscale and all the different effects for the different values that you can affect all these. And remember that they give each example, you can open up, say the UI dissolve, go to the layout, and you can just look at how they're set up with the dissolves. If you want to look at a transition, you can say that the 25% transition uses the UI transition effect, transitions with a very particular texture, and you can choose to cut off, fade, and do loads and loads of different awesome effects that you can mess around with. And now we're going to take a quick look at the soft mask for Unity GUI from Mob Sakai 2. And I do have a full tutorial about this, which I'll put the link in the description. But this allows you to take what the standard mask is in Unity, which can be quite pixelated and quite uneven and just really nasty and soften it to make it look much nicer whether you can do inversions soft masks you can do breakcast filters and so much more it does allow you to convert the original unity masks to a soft mask by just adding a component and converting it over so to get yourself started for me again you can right click in the top corner on the code and just click the copy to copy the actual soft ui link then what you can do is you can go into unity add the get from url and make sure you paste it in there 
and then it will come with the UI soft mask and make sure you, that you import or update it if you need to. You can import the demo and import Text Mesh Pro support. Then you can open up soft mask 1.02 you can open up the soft mask demo and then you will get a preview of the items that are in it. Because you can see that Unity's default mask is quite ugly and quite jagged and just not smooth at all. And with this soft mask, you can actually change the smoothness of how it would look. So that's Unity's default with a softness to really take away those jagged edges that look really nasty. You can use nested soft masks which allow you to have almost masks within masks, essentially, which is quite cool with an actual buffer that it uses. You can use inverted masks, so you can use or add something which inverts it out of something else. If you need to create that style effect, you can use a raycast filter so that you can actually still have it to be able to use for a button. And then you can actually use a parent soft mask so based on the buffer that you've used here, it mask out specific areas and you can invert this to put that over specific areas too. So as you can see, how it's based out is the an original image is just the image of this star. And then underneath that as children, you will have your image or your label, whatever you want to be masked off. And you'll just have a Unity default mask there, which will mask off the element just like you can see there. But with Mob Sakai's effect that you have the same thing, you still have the star as the main image, but you will add a soft mask component, which you can still affect the softness and you can affect the alpha value of how actual solid it is. And on your specific child object, which is the main photo, you have a soft maskable script. So like I said, if you added this soft mask component to a Unity default component instead, it would just ask you like in here to fix the specific children. And then in here, if you want a nested soft mask, you just make sure that you set it up in the way that you did before with the shape that you'll use and then put the children underneath, which are images, and then also make the subbed images just a child of that main object underneath and you can mask them as time goes on. And then in this case, we have some text which is the main soft mask area. And then underneath the text, we've got a logo, which is also the soft maskable area. And then you can choose whether, in this case, the toggle changes the soft maskable to inversion. And then in this example, we have text mesh pro support, which is just the parent, which is what, how we want it to be masked with the image below with the soft mask component. And then we have some text mesh pro, which also has soft maskable, which you want then inside the mask and you can choose how close or how far away that will actually mask it off. And like I said, I do have a more in-depth tutorial on masking and how best to use masking. And I'll put the link in the description. And I wanted to mention that Mobsaka actually has a couple of other great UI extensions, which is the reverse mask for the Unity GUI. So you can unmask and use an unmask Raycast filter. And then there is also another, which is particle effects for Unity GUI, which is classed as UI particles. So you can use specific things to overlay or underlay the effects and even use special components to feature particle attractor, absolute position modes, and you can use the particle system versus the UI particle. And it's much easier to render supports overlays. You can have it maskable and sortable. So be sure to check out all these awesome UI effects and I gave you a brief overview and you can always message me down in the comments if you want to see a more in-depth look at some of these effects. Be sure to check out all the links in the description for all the best Unity sales, savings and assets for this month. Be sure to come and join me on Patreon if you want to get access to over 165 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Do be sure to come and join me on Discord and check out my great assets on the Unity Asset Store along with massive savings on all of those assets. Big thank you to all my patrons, including Peter Steiner, Raheem Whitaker, Jean Pommy, Manos Berikas, Terence Conrad, Walter Dunson, Renny Leisure, Topher Chambers, Alyssa Faden, Daniel Getterjank, Ishikawa Takuya, Ron J. Hush, Thomas Mercileski, Callum Murray, Mark Rondu, A Beast Gaming, Marvin Church, Osame Abdul, Hoagland Nigan, Nopa Kun, Josh Huang, Yak Seas, Gamer Oba 122, Kermits, and Thomas Lopez. And thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.